So we've been talking about this fantasy narrative, um, solo board gaming, some of the different solo board games that I enjoy playing, which I pushed up a couple of days ago. And I wanted to follow up on a comment that asked about Mistfall and where do I think this has play in terms of a solo game? Because I've made mention of Warhammer Quest, the fantasy Warhammer Fantasy Quest, the card game. A little bit of a tongue twister there. Um, I love that game. Pathfinder, the adventure card game. Um, Rune Lords, my favorite in the first edition series. Second edition series that's out. Um, love it. You know, great. What about Mistfall? I have Mistfall. I've played Mistfall. Just the core on it. And um, I will do a video on that in a lot more detail. We'll look at a vlog on there because it is, it is a very compact and a very a nice game in terms of the narrative i love the narrative i only have the the first installment there's been some expansions there's a second installment on there the the biggest thing for me about the game was production value high narrative absolutely high um mechanics very very good but the level of detail I understand what they were trying to do, but the game might have been too good for itself. Um, this is just kind of my um, perspective from a solo-type board game. In keeping the card mechanics tight and giving you a lot of options, it makes use of a lot of symbols. It makes use of kind of tracking things on this tracking board and on cards. For me, that kind of slows down the gameplay. Um, Mage Knight the biggest hurdle of Mage Knight for me was like all these symbols on there. Now, yes, with practice and repetition and, and playing it on there, you're going to learn it. But for me, that learning curve was there when I have other games that the learning curve isn't as deep, you know, isn't as much with, with Pathfinder or Warhammer. Um, in terms of the narrative, what a lot of people say is it's, it's very puzzly. And um, essentially, once you learn the combos – that are on there getting to the end and and facing down the the challenges it's it's already like it's solved itself and i would counter that and say i'm um, having played it enough that that's true of any game i mean uh, xeno shift is perhaps one of the the hardest games that i own it's a lane defense base building type game on there but even with that, um, you play through Xeno Shift enough, you kind of know the infinite combos to, to, to do that on there. I mean, that's, that's true of any type of game. So after you've mastered a game, then you start playing different character classes or you start taking less optimal builds. So I don't think that's a fair criticism of once you've unlocked the formula of Mistfall it, it doesn't have any value. I mean, that's, that's true of Pathfinder the Adventure card game on there, but I, I go through the adventure paths again by playing different characters, trying to utilize different items as I acquire them. Maybe I'll use a lesser item on there. What I do like about the game is there's enough, in terms of location, random abil randomness? Randomability? I'm trying to think of the word, and I'm, I'm struggling. It's, it's late at night here, right? Um, looking at that, there is enough difference in the approach to the end story that, for me, makes the narrative interesting and captivating so it is a good game and i do enjoy it and i pull it out every now and then simply the reason why it doesn't have higher weight in my collection the learning curve on the symbols um, but again having warhammer quest the card game and having pathfinder first edition second edition adventure card game i, I kind of have that full that's one of the reasons why um, I've been able to resist jumping into Legendary Encounters. I mean, I love the Aliens universe. And people are like, Fritz, you're mentioning this narrative card game. Bro, why aren't you buying into that? Because I, I have that part of my gaming collection in terms of card games. Uh, Lord of the Rings. I mean, I, I play Lord of the Rings, the, the living card game, massively. That's one of the reasons why I didn't jump into Arkham on there, where I'm, I'm good um, with that for now. If I was jumping in again, starting from scratch, honestly, the two that I would look at would be Pathfinder, the adventure card game, second edition, simply because I think the narrative is great. There's a lot of really fun things to it, and it captures that narrative good. I've covered that in a number of vlogs up on my channel in the Boards Games playlist. But for me, the reason why at this time I would jump in 
for second edition. Pathfinder is because it's literally new. The core is out. The first adventure set is out. Jumping in at the beginning of a game allows you, as it advances, to be a part of that advance. Everything is fresh and new compared to, say, jumping into a game that's already been out with five or six expansions. It's, it's a little less discovery. I would also possibly consider jumping into Mistfall exclusively. So this way, I have an adventure card game where it's a little bit easier to play. It's dice. It's free-flowing. You just kind of go. But I also then have something with a little more puzzly type action, um, a little bit more of combo unlocking and, and really exploring it, you know, kind of the difference between the two on there. I mean, this is one of the reasons why in exploration, I, I, I love Runebound, but I also love Mage Knight. Different, uh, same narrative, but different approaches on there. 